They not like us, but the real issue is we're not like them. They not like us has become a cultural us. anthem. Like it's time like to confront the deeper they truth like within us. our community. On this week's episode of the Broken Traditions podcast, we'll explore five reasons Two, three, four, five plus five. why they not like us is not a flex, but rather we're not like them is a bigger problem. What's going on, y'all, man? Welcome or welcome back to the Broken Traditions Podcast. On this week's episode, we're going to discuss on how we are not like them is a bigger problem. So this is a play on the most popular hip hop song of the year. I would say perhaps the most popular or the most biggest hip hop battle rap this song of all time. They not like us. But before we get into that, man, here on Broken Traditions, we are about breaking away from toxic traditions of black culture. If you went to that kind of content, you have that kind of mindset, join the movement. And by joining the movement, you can subscribe to the YouTube or you can join the memberships on YouTube and Patreon. I greatly appreciate anybody who's a member. And if you guys want to join the membership, I would uh, appreciate that as well, right? Membership starts at $4.99. On Patreon, memberships goes a little bit higher because you can get more stuff like free merch. Like, as you can see right here, if you're watching the video, this is the Wins and Lessons hoodie. Broken Traditions Wins and Lessons um, premium hoodie. So you can win stuff like that. Or not win, but you get free stuff like that with higher memberships. You know what I'm saying? So higher memberships, you get free stuff like that. If you guys are watching this on Rumble, Facebook, um, Instagram, Patreon, wherever you're watching this stuff at, right? Please join the movement by following subscribing or what have you whatever it is that the format you watching to have you come to you know follow this kind of content and join the movement so we can have conversations with like-minded people who want to break away from toxic traditions also if you guys are listening to the audio format which is on iHeartRadio, uh spotify uh, apple Podcasts, wherever you're hearing this podcast please follow the podcast also um youtube podcast that's the thing as well shout out to youtube podcast follow the podcast subscribe to the podcast and leave a review leave a review reviews really help the show i greatly appreciate it you know what i'm saying uh if you like this kind of content leave a five star review um broken traditions you know what i'm saying we don't accept anything less than five stars but <laughs> if you want to leave a review man just leave a review let me know how you feel about it also check out www.brokentraditions.com you can see um you know my merch you see my blogs and if you sign up for the newsletter you get a 10 percent discount for the merch and also for the month of july for my big brother for his birthday i'm doing a sale with the merch uh you can use discount code big 25 you get 25 percent off all the merch and also if you spend up to 99 dollars 99.99 you get free shipping so guys want to support the channel support the movement you could do that as well appreciate you guys all right so they not like us right they not like us is the biggest the biggest rap battle diss song of all time right not the best the biggest i would make the argument in my opinion that they not like us is not even the best diss song within the battle between kendrick lamar and drake right i think the best song overall out of that battle was um Meet the Grams, in my opinion. Um, Alchemist, that track was crazy, and the whole delivery about it, the whole structure of the song was crazy. Um, and I'll make the argument to me, in my opinion, that Family Matters by Drake was a better song lyrically than They Not Like Us. But as far as a song that have a, a nationwide impact, like They Not Like Us, some could argue a global impact, like They Not Like Us is definitely They Not Like Us. That's the that song has a crazy global impact, uh, crazy nationwide impact. You know what I'm saying? To me, there has not been a diss song, hip hop wise, that big. They're like, they not like us. Never seen that like that before. This song has took a life of its own, right? I mean, I've seen people change their screen names to they not like us. I've seen people <laughs> with t-shirts, right? I went to the Peace Tree Road Race. I see people with t-shirts running the race saying they not like us. If you see the music video where DJ Mustard and Kendrick Lamar is at a restaurant ordering food in Compton, 
and they got a girl dancing that restaurant now has a mural who say they not like us right they not like us is a big phenomenon i mean we could take you a little further the vice president of the united states kamala harris used they not like us at the bet awards i know you've been traveling across the country what are you hearing yeah girl i'm out here in these streets and let me tell you you're right taraj these extremists as they say they not like us we gonna get to that a little bit later but <laughs> they not like us big phenomenon but i want to make the argument i want to use they not like us for a i guess a foundation of the today's conversation of they not like us it's not really the flex but the real issue is we're not like them so in this episode this week's episode i'm gonna give you guys five reasons Two, three, four, five plus five, I the issue is we're not like them that's the issue i want to talk about how our culture the flex of they not like us is not really the flex that we think it is and we got to have this kind of conversation this conversation is not a knock on the song they not like us or the support of they not like us but rather is a mirror holding up to the culture for things that need to be corrected or course corrected in my opinion right if you guys feel like there's other things that should be discussed on we're not like them let me know in the comments or let me know via email if you guys listen to this on audio formats right email leron l-e-r-o-n at broken traditions.com so you can email me there and i'll email you guys back or leave a comment within the comment section right also i want to say this too i i gotta always put this disclaimer out there you guys see thumbnails you guys see titles you guys probably get triggered and get upset about things because your connection to it all i ask of you in my Raphael the Sadiq voice all I ask of you is listen to the full episode listen to the full episode so to get context of what I'm talking about and understanding where I'm coming from right you know I know we live in a, a time in a culture where people are upset about things and they just want to be um you know triggered and <laughs> have the um the the feelings put into the comments listen to what I have to say Listen to what I have to say, then we can have a conversation, right? If you're not listening to the full episode, you know, you're not going to get the full context of what I'm what I'm talking about. All right. So usually on the Broken Traditions podcast, what I've been what I've been doing is I use a quote in the beginning of the show, right? This this episode, I have not used a quote in the beginning of the show because for each one of the reasons, I am going to use a quote for each reason. So let's get into the five reasons five five reasons why they not like us but the real problem is we're not like them so the most common way people give up their power is by thinking they don't have any alice walker the first reason i want to say that we're not like them is the bigger issue is because we do not have any political freedom within our culture black culture or black americans is the only group of people who is tied to a political party so i got this data from cornell university right i'll leave a link in the show notes so you guys can check it out for yourselves 87 percent, 87 percent, according to this data of black Americans voted for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris in the 2020 presidential election, 87%. That only leaves 13% of us who decided to vote for maybe Donald Trump or somebody else, right? Maybe somebody independent, but 87% of us voted for that for those one people. So I'm gonna take it back a few years, right? 2016, 2020, when Donald Trump was running against Hillary Clinton, when Donald Trump was running against uh, Joe Biden. Um, during those times, right, if any black person who had an idea or who had a thought of even supporting Donald Trump was called everything under the sun as a derogatory term towards black people, sellouts, coons, Uncle Toms, um, bootlickers, all these derogatory terms that was called to black men or black people because they decided they might want to entertain Donald Trump. Let alone if you voted for Donald Trump, 
you probably stopped having family members talking to you. You know what I'm saying? You probably had people who would write you off and never speak to you again because you use your constitutional right. The thing you use what your ancestors died for, right? You know what I'm saying? I guess ancestors only died for us to vote Democrat. You use what our ancestors died for, what they want you. That's what they say to you when they want you to vote. You use that. You, you, you exercise that right. You exercise that right. And now you call everything under the sun and people don't talk to you no more. That kind of strangle of chokehold is only with our, within our culture. That you'll be seen as a sellout if you decide that you want to have a discussion or you want to support somebody else that's not Democrat. That is a problem. That's problematic. And to me, I, I'll be real with you, man. Sometimes when I look at other cultures that have that kind of political freedom within their culture where, say, an Asian person could be like, I like Trump. Nope. They're not called derogatory terms from saying that. Uh, um, a Latino could say, I like Trump. They're not called derogatory terms for not saying that. Well, it depends, right? I guess I remember when I think uh, Daddy Yankee performed for uh, John McCain and Joe, Fat Joe got at him for that. I, I, I think something like that happened. But we're the only group of people who would turn our backs on people for doing something. I spoke about this before. Remember Chrisette Michelle? Chrisette Michelle career took a nosedive because she sung at the inaugural, um, the inauguration of Donald Trump when he became president. So you have an opportunity to sing for the president. And for you taking that gig, you know, I guess you lost your quote unquote black card. Like Spike Lee got it. Everybody was getting that Chrisette Michelle for doing that. What other culture has that kind of issue where you can't even sing at an inauguration of a president? This is, she's still American. End of the day, who's the president? She's still American. But you, you've seen as a sellout. But let's go back to the cultural norms of, I guess, voting blue no matter who. When I was younger, right, I was told that you just vote Democrat. There was no question asked. There was not, hey, perhaps this person is better. We should look into this. No, you vote Democrat, right? I was told by that by plenty of people that the quote unquote Democrats are for black people, right? And, you know, me being younger, you know, I was like, okay, I just went along with it. And I didn't have any political intelligence at that time. I didn't have the fact that perhaps voting this way could impact this or voting this way could impact that. I didn't have that at this time when I was younger, when I first started voting, right? So I didn't do any research. I didn't know information. I did nothing. I just fell in line because that's what I was told, right? If I am told that, I'm pretty sure that there's a whole bunch of black people who told the same thing. Fall in line, vote Democrat. And the reason why I believe that is to be true because we voted 87% of voting for Democrats during the 2020 election for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. But I want to add on to this too. Not only us voting at a 87% is a problem, but the blatant disrespect that these politicians have for black people, for black culture is also a problem that other people or other groups of people would not tolerate. I'll give you an example. During the 2016 election, right, Hillary Clinton went to the Breakfast Club, which was the biggest um, platform or the biggest morning radio show within black culture, right? The Breakfast Club with Charlemagne, Angela Yee, and um, DJ Envy. And she went up there to campaign to black voters. And during her um, appearance on the Breakfast Club, she said she got hot sauce in her bag. Always carry with you. Hot Just sauce. Really? You, yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Are you getting information right now? <laughs> hot sauce. Hot sauce wow. in my bag, Swag? Hot sauce. Really? Yes. Now, listen, yes. I just want you to know people are going to see this and say, okay, she's pandering to black people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is it working? Yeah. <laughs> now, you guys may or may not remember, hot sauce in the bag is a reference to Beyonce. Right? Got hot sauce in my bag, Swag. swag. Right. Hot sauce in the bag is a reference to Beyonce and Hillary Clinton used that reference to try to relate to black voters. And Charlemagne said it straight up. He said, you know, some people are going to say that you're pandering to black people. And she said, is it working? Is it working? <laughs> is it working? <laughs> is it working? 
that's <laughs> crazy disrespectful. Imagine if Hillary Clinton or any political person went to a, a, a an Asian radio show and she said, I got soy sauce in my bag. You think 87% of Asians would be voting for this woman or anybody who represents the party. It, if she said, I got soy sauce in my bag, duck sauce in my bag, but she said hot sauce in my bag and we okay with that. But now let's go a little further, right? 2020 election. Joe Biden is doing a video call with Charlemagne the God, the host of The Breakfast Club. So now we have another Democratic presidential nominee that is on The Breakfast Club again, right? And Joe Biden, to me, he says the most disrespectful thing on that show. I mean, Hillary Clinton's hot sauce in the bag was one thing, right? That was one thing. That was disrespectful. But what Joe Biden said takes the cake. And I think to me, in my opinion, I'm going to go as far as to say this on record. What Joe Biden said is perhaps the most disrespectful thing that a politician ever said about black people in modern history. In modern history. Charlemagne the God asked Joe Biden, you know, what, what should black, why should black people vote for you? And this is what Joe Biden said. Question, but I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. Question, but I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. Question, but I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. If you have trouble figuring out for you, you're not for me or Trump, then you ain't black. That's how they see us. That's how they see us. Straight up and down, he told this black man, this black man of influence, especially at the time of 2020, this black man of influence, that if you don't know not to vote for me, then you ain't black. Your whole cultural identity is attached to your vote, according to President Joe Biden. And he has a point because we voted for Joe Biden at 87% after that. I Now, I, I gave the analogy of Hillary Clinton, hot sauce in the bag, and if she say like soy sauce, duck sauce in the bag, how that, I can't think of any other group that would tolerate that. Tolerate that, let alone prove them to be right. I can't think of any other group. And I say any other group, I'm talking about race, I'm talking about religion, I'm talking about sexual orientation. I can't think of any other group that would tolerate that. To take it from a, a federal level, bring it to a local level, look how we vote for politicians just because they have the D next to their name. Pause. Look how we voted for people who do not have the best interests for within our people, right? Within within either our people as far as black people and or our people as far as American citizens. Let's take it to New York City and let's take it to Chicago. New York City, Eric Adams, Chicago, Brandon Johnson. Or two black men who ran as Democrats for their, for their cities, right? And how the migrants came into those two cities and the resources that was for the American citizens went to illegal immigrants. How those resources went there. So all the things that was needed for people who are disenfranchised that are citizens of the country, they don't get. But the people who just came into the country illegally get all these resources. Those are the people y'all voted for. Y'all voted for those people. And why you voted for them? Because they Democrat and because they black. Let's be real. That's the reason why you voted for them. We could go to another politician close to Mary Brandon Johnson, Tiffany Hinyard. Tiffany Hinyard, according to Dalton's website, right? Dalton's official website. I'll leave the link in the show notes so you guys can check it out yourself. Tiffany Hinyard got an 82%. 82% votes within that village and why did she get 82 percent? because tiffany henyard was going to be the first black female mayor 
of the village. So that was more important to y'all than having somebody that's qualified for that position. You're not qualified, baby. Right, that's so that's cool. all good. Put it like this. Also, according to the official Dalton website, I'll put a link in the show notes for this as well. The village has a $5 million deficit, right? $5 million deficit. That's so crazy because before she took that position, there was $2 million in the surplus. So you went from $2 million in the in the surplus to $5 million in the deficit. That is a $7 million swing within her time as the mayor. Then we have politicians like uh, Latoya Cantrell out of New Orleans, right? Who I guess had to reveal the black pick, <laughs> a black pick um, statue within the city. Who also, with the power that's invested in her, named June 11th back that ass up day in honor of juvenile hit song. Even though the crime rate in New Orleans is 161% higher than any city, 161% higher of the crime rate, she wants to name June 11th back that ass up day. That's what we get for voting blue, no matter who. But just, I just want y'all to think about this, man. What other group of people would tolerate this type of disrespect from their politicians and get that kind of support? Let me know in the comments what other group you could think of. And I want to know groups of religion. I want to know groups of race and of sexual orientation that you could think of that would take that blatant disrespect and just be okay with it and vote at a damn near 90% clip for that politician. We don't have political freedom. We don't have political freedom. We're not like them. And they're not like us because they do have political freedom. They could vote outside of what is the norm or what is expected of us with no issues and don't get uh, pushed out of the culture, right? The most potent weapon in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed, Steve Biko. Our culture is heavily influenced by outsiders. These outsiders make the terms and conditions of what it is to be black. I want to use a quote from Stickman, Stickman, one half of Dead Press. He says, it's not even our own people who own BET. They got to get it from somebody. It might as well be me. A big part of black culture is made up from hip hop and entertainment. And unfortunately, this is a big issue. If black Americans don't fall into the criteria of what hip hop cultivates, they're not seen as black. The reason why this is a big issue is because we don't own hip hop. We don't own it. We fall in line of what we want hip hop to be, but we don't own hip hop. We may create some things within hip hop, but we don't own the business of hip hop. That's a problem. And if we don't own the business of hip hop and hip hop has such a big influence in the culture, then who is controlling our culture? And if people don't fall into the criteria of what hip hop is determined to be within the culture, they seen as outsiders of the own culture or they own people, right? I'm a person who got into cycling, right? That's my bicycle helmet. I'm a person who got into cycling. And <laughs> I remember when I first got into cycling, I was told that I was doing quote unquote white shit because <laughs> I wanted to cycle because I got into cycling. I'm doing white shit. So... And I was also told that black people don't buy these expensive bikes to ride, right? That's what I was told when I got into cycling. You're doing white shit. Black people don't do that. What you doing? If things don't fall into the quote-unquote hip-hop culture, sometimes or too many times, I would say, you're not seen as black. Say you somebody who's into, um, like, I don't know, cosplay with Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that. Oh, he ain't black. He doing white shit. Oh, say somebody is not dressed as far as hip hop culture. You dress a certain way. Oh, you're not black. Say you don't even like hip hop. Say you're somebody, say you're a black girl who's a Swifty. 
oh, you know, she ain't black. She like Taylor Swift just because she rather listen to Taylor Swift than Beyonce. She's not black. That's where we at with it. We push her out. We push out our own because of people's preferences. And these preferences are coming from hip hop culture. <laughs> Come on now. We got to be real with ourselves. There were times where you were told if you got good grades, you ain't black. There were times if you were told if you speak proper English, you're not black. And like I said, these terms and conditions come from hip hop culture, which is not even owned by us. We create within hip hop culture, but we don't own hip hop culture. Let's really think about how much influence hip hop has over black culture. Like I mentioned before, Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris, Vice President Kamala Harris used they not like us at the BET Awards. These extremists, as they say, they not like us. Now let's think about who really runs hip hop and the message being promoted hip hop. Like I mentioned this before in the prior videos, how Meek Mill mentioned rappers get paid more money, more money to rap about violence. He discussed this on a panel for the NAACP. He's rapping about, you know, violence and guns. You know, that we get paid to rap about that stuff. They actually pay us more when we rap about more ignorant stuff. Oh, I take it to another step. Young Miami was on um, Jason Lee's podcast, and he asked, was her daughter going to be a city girl? She's like, I don't want this life for her. Her comes to you as pretty as she is and says, Mom, I want to be a city girl. She ain't gonna be no city girl. <laughs> so Summer ain't allowed to be no city girl? Mm-mm. No. <laughs> I want her race totally different. Like, you know, I don't even want her to even see the light of day like that. Like, I really want her to just be like, you know, like level-headed, a school girl, and just on a whole nother way. So you're promoting music to other children, or Meek Mills, you're promoting, well, you say you get paid more for it, so this is your job. So your job is to promote this stuff, but you know that this is wrong because Meek Mill is speaking about this on the NAACP panel and young Miami saying that she don't want her daughter to fall into this. You know this is wrong. But hip-hop is such a large uh, force within our culture that we can't even recognize that they have to speak like this. We don't, we don't even recognize that they have to talk like this on records because they are told to do so. And why they told to do so? Let's really unpack how big this is. The labels that own all the, I guess, sub sub subsidiary labels that hip hop own is owned by bigger labels, right? Those bigger labels and also those entertainment companies that show those music videos and what have you is owned by a parent company called BlackRock. BlackRock also owns. Core Civics, which is the second largest correctional facility in the United States. The big company want the rappers, like Meek Mill said, to, to talk about more violence, you get paid more money, and you talking about more violence is filling up the jails. Now you got City Girls, or you got Young Miami saying that her lyrics, she don't want her daughter to follow her lyrics, but she promoting those lyrics to get more women in jail. Talk about scamming and scheming get more women in jail, breaking them more homes. We don't own that cult. We don't own that aspect of the culture, but that aspect of the culture has such a deep impact within our people. Now, me breaking down how outsiders own our culture. Well, what outsiders own hip hop culture. Think about another group of people, another group of people that would allow outsiders to control their culture, to be the determining factor of their culture, to put the terms and conditions of what it is to be within their culture. Name any other group that have that to be their, uh, their reality. I can't think of one, except for us, but they not like us but we are not like them. And that's a bigger problem. Show me in the white community that a comedian is a white leader. These aren't leaders. These are puppets and clowns that have been set up over the black community 
by the white community. Malcolm X. Our culture, our culture, we follow a uh, celebrity. We follow celebrity. We follow fame. We follow influence at an alarming rate. And the people that we follow, the entertainers, the musicians, the uh, rappers, whoever, those people, like I described on reason number two, are controlled by outsiders. So these people know all they have to do is give this person a check and they would fall in line and tell our people what to do. And unfortunately, for a lot of cases, our people will do what is said by these celebrities. That quote that I read by Malcolm X is over 60 years old. 60 that Malcolm X said that quote. Isn't it kind of heartbreaking knowing that that quote is still relevant to this day? That you could basically use a black celebrity as a pawn to get out a message to a black community. And we fall for it. I mean, just right now, right? We see two entertainers who are deeply, deeply rooted into the Democratic Party. Uh, D.L. Hughley, a comedian, um, radio host, and Plies, a rapper, right? Deeply, deeply rooted into the Democratic Party to a point that I had to really mute D.L. Hughley's Instagram page. Like, I couldn't, right now, I couldn't just, I couldn't, I can't see his content. It was that bad. I can't see his content. Plies, I don't even follow Plies. It's that bad. Now, you know, in this election, we have black entertainers doing the same thing for Donald Trump. They know the playbook. They know all they have to do is get influencers. All they have to get is celebrities. All they have to get is entertainers to endorse somebody and people are going to fall in line because they like that person. I'll give you guys an example with me, right? My social media is not as big as the Hughley's applies. Not yet. But I will say this, I got approached by an agency that wanted me to create content for Joe Biden. Even though I'm not a Joe Biden supporter, I got reached, they reached out to me, sent me an email saying, if you create content, we'll pay you to say the great things that Joe Biden has done for you and your family. The, the, um, the initiatives he put in for you that helped you and your family. I got approached. So if I got approached, you can imagine who's getting approached on those type of levels. I mean, we could take it to a few years ago, 2020, during COVID. How many rappers, entertainers, uh, like I said, influencers on social media was telling people to roll up their sleeves and get that shot? We've seen it all. We've seen people we didn't even know that was even um, down for taking the shot. We've seen celebrities. I remember it was a clip of Mariah Carey getting a fake shot just to say that she got a shot, to show her getting a the shot. They know the psyche of black America. They know largely most of us is influenced by whatever celebrity says. They know that rappers, athletes, singers, social media influencers, comedians, whatever, got our attention and all they have to do is wave some money in front of them, say, tell them to say this. And they say, you know, they will say it. Like I said, I turned down that joke by the agency thing. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to allow an agency to use my voice to put out their message. and compromise my integrity with my people, with the community I want to build online. I'm not going to use, let an agency do that. You know what I'm saying? And also I'm not even a fan of Joe Biden to do something like that. I'm not a fan of no politician to do that, to be honest. So I wasn't doing it, but if they approach me, trust me, they're approaching them. And it's crazy because if an entertainer goes off the script and don't do as what they told, or don't say what they want you to say, they will attack you at ways that we have never seen before. 
Look at Kanye West. Look what how they attacked Kanye West. How on paper Kanye West was a billionaire until he said things he said. And he wasn't. Look how they attacked Kyrie Irving for posting, I think, a picture of a movie on his Twitter. Look how they attacked Kyrie Irving. We can take it back. Look how they attack Ma'u Dawdu Aruf. These entertainers, these athletes have to be pup puppets to the black community. You see it all the time how they are told what to say. They're told who to endorse. They all fall in line just to make sure they are part of that elite group. You know what I'm saying? They ain't getting crumbs off the tables of the elites. And they're so happy because now they have a good life and they have a level of... Uh, I guess, comfortability. It's sad. It's definitely sad. But like I mentioned before, what other group is moving like that? What other group is using celebrity to influence them at this rate? I mean, yeah, celebrity do influence other people and other groups, but look how they're doing with us. We don't see it like that in other groups. If you do, you do see it. Let me know in the comments. I would love to know. It is easier to build strong children than repair broken men. Frederick Douglass. Y'all not might y'all might not like this one, but we gotta really talk about it. The fourth reason why it's in problem one issue that we're not like them is because we praise and worship and glorify the worst of what our culture has to offer. Think about this. If a man come home from jail, man come home from jail, he'll get more love from his community than the man that graduated college. Or we would celebrate the single mother who has five kids by five baby daddies that is figuring it out, but we won't mention the happily married couple that has five kids under one roof. We won't mention that, but we'll applaud and be happy about the single mother with five kids and five baby daddies. More than we would like to admit, gang culture and hoe culture is a big part of moving the needle within the black culture. Gang culture and hoe culture. There is a subgenre of hip hop that's called gangster rap and pussy rap. That's where we're at with it. I spoke briefly about a incident at a Juneteenth festival where a gang member or killed two black women and shot 14 people and how we were silent about this. We were silent. Nobody said anything. Only a few channels talked about this on their social media platforms that a black woman, lost, two black women lost their lives at a Juneteenth festival. But we don't talk about that. By the hands of a gangbanger. But I also mentioned too, if that shooter happened to be white, we'd have had a five-part documentary series on Netflix released on July 4th. <laughs> it, 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 that, if that shooting happened on J June 19th, we would have had a five-part documentary series produced, uploaded, and put out on July 4th a few weeks later because that's the way we move right the white boogeyman is always the bigger problem than the black gangbanger killing our own in our culture not to mention how gang culture is above criticism so is whole culture there was parts of time if you criticize this quote-unquote whole culture you was pushed out of the black community like the, the things i talked about in reason number two you were pushed out of the black community if you talked about whole culture if you criticize whole culture it, for the fact that there's a subgenre of rap that's called pussy rap to become a thing is disgusting how do we allow something like that to happen pussy rap <laughs> how how do we allow that to happen we for whatever reason attach ourselves to things that is not really how we live right and let me explain what i mean by that I'll say this with all due respect. I'm not saying this to, to be disrespectful 
of this person or the of these two people I mentioned. When George Floyd lost his life, there was a a level of that could have been me, right? What happened to George Floyd was a tragic event for George Floyd. But at the same time, I'm comfortable enough saying that I don't see myself in that same situation as George Floyd because I didn't, I don't move how George Floyd moved. So if I don't move like that, why would I be in that situation? And if I'm not in that situation, why would I say I could see that happening to me? I think that is something that we attach ourselves to. Oh man, that could have been me. Perhaps it couldn't have been. And that's something that I see only our culture do. We attach ourselves to a situation like that. For for example, right? Say there's a uh, um, a person that's in a motorcycle gang within the white culture, right? Just say, I don't know, a motorcycle gang. Is it Irish or Italian? What I think. All right, let's say an Italian mobster, right? Italian mobster gets shot down in the street. Boom, 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 boom. There's some like mob ties or something like that. Happened in, say, New York, right? You think an Italian person that lives in Florida that works, go home, take care of his family, feels like that could have been him. But George Floyd incident happened in Minneapolis. A person in New York, a person in Georgia, a person in Florida, a person in Wyoming, right? A black person in any of those states said that could have been me. Why do we do that? Why do we attach ourselves to that? I'll give another example. And like I said, I'm saying this with all the respect. I'm not, I'm not putting these people's situations out there to be disrespectful. I'm putting these situations out there because, you know, we attach ourselves to things. Another person, Breonna Taylor. And this right here gets me upset more, right? Because I, I hear black women saying that I could see myself being Breonna Taylor. And the reason why I say this upsets me more because the Breonna Taylor story, the, 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 the quiet part that a lot of people don't talk about is her boyfriend. Um, Breonna Taylor, her boyfriend was home and the police... I guess they did knock and, you know, coming into the house warrant. They knocked, say, police and came into the house. From them hearing that knock, Brianna Taylor and her boyfriend went to the door together. And her boyfriend shot the first shot at police, hit a police officer. Police officers returned fire and Brianna Taylor got hit five times. And he didn't get hit at all. Like I said, there's so many parts that's not being said about that story that is, to me, disturbing. Because, one, you saying that that could have been you. Why would you be with a man that would allow you to go to the door? Allow you to, to go to the door and he's present with you and there's knocking on the door. You, you would, would you allow that? Would you be with a man that's like that? Two. How in the world you with a man and you get shot five times and he don't get hit? There's parts of that story that we're not discussing. There's, there's questions that need to be asked about that story. That perhaps is another story for another day. But as a black woman, you can see yourself with a man like that. As a black woman, you can see yourself in a situation like that. I would like to believe that you would not see yourself in a situation like that. But we attach ourselves to things like that. Not to saying that Brianna Taylor was a bad woman, but she was caught up in some things according to the police files, that she was caught up in some things, that she was attached to some things, attached to some bad people. And she attached herself to some bad people, including her boyfriend who shot at the police and miraculously did not get hit by a police officer bullets, but she got shot five times. 
like I said, man, that's another story for another day. I just me even going through that gets me pissed off. But we attach ourselves to stuff like that. We attach ourselves to stories like that for whatever reason. To me, that's problematic. To me, we don't need to attach ourselves to, you know, tragic stories, or we don't need to attach ourselves to the worst what our culture has to offer. You know, we don't need to attach ourselves to gang culture, or we don't have to be silent about gang culture. We don't have to try to sweep gang culture under the rug like there's no problem. Like, we can't speak on it. Like, it's not a problem that uh, two black women lost their lives at a Juneteenth festival by the hands of a black gang member. We can speak on how disgusting whole culture is. We can speak on it. You know, I guess that shouldn't be off limits to say, damn, we tired of this whole culture. Give me an example of gang culture and whole culture being glorified within another community. But name name another culture where gang culture and whole culture is propped up to be the cream of the crop. I don't think there's no other culture like that. A people without the knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots. Marcus Garvey. The fifth reason I want to discuss on how it's more of a problem that we're not like them is we allow the disrespect of our culture and heritage. We allow it. We allow it and also we take part in it. We can start with the N-word. How the N-word is second nature to be used. How N-word is so fluent to be used within our culture. In some cases, it's abnormal not to use the N-word. And I don't care how you're trying to spin it. I don't care how you're trying to say it. I don't care how you're trying to spell it. We know the origin of the N-word. We know the origin of it, but we use it, use it at an alarming rate. Not to mention, we get upset when other people use it. But we okay using ourselves. I'm doing a video, right? I'm doing a video about the N-word. And we got to really break this down. I'll give you a small sample of it. We say that we own the N-word, right? We say, yeah, we own it. We took ownership of it. It's our word now. There was a teacher, and this is very common to hear stories like this. There was a teacher who was called the N-word by one of his students. This teacher flipped out, beat the student up, and lost his job, and also went to jail. If we own the word, the N-word, if we own that word, if now that we reclaimed it, remixed it, and we own it now, how come we're reacting like that? How come we're we're willing to lose our livelihood and we're willing to go to jail because somebody used it? Or somebody used something that we own. I say I own broken traditions. I do. Legally. If somebody called me broken traditions, I'm not going to fight a person and go to jail because it's something I own now. But that's another story for another day. Make sure you guys follow the movement of Broken Tradition so you guys won't miss that video I do on the N-word. Oh, we also allow politicians, right? Going back to part number one. We also allow politicians to be disrespectful to us. Or use our trauma to try to get us to scare, scare us to vote. Case in point, uh, Joe Biden. Joe Biden literally said, if you don't vote for me, Donald Trump's going to put you back in chains. Rules. Unchain Wall Street. They're going to put y'all back in chains. <laughs> Donald Trump is going to put us back in chains. Donald Trump is going to put us back in slavery, according to Joe Biden. Not to mention, they like to say how the Republicans are going to bring back Jim Crow. Another hurtful time period in black culture. How they're going to bring that back to us. How Jim Crow, perhaps one of the strongest caste systems within the world history, 
is going to be brought back because if we vote a certain way. How do we allow politicians to be this disrespectful? How do we allow it? How do we allow politicians to be dis- this disrespectful? I'm going to give you an example of another group of people who did not allow that. During the scare tactics of trying to get somebody to vote a certain way, Donald Trump was called Adolf Hitler or the new Adolf Hitler. There were so many articles and videos and things posted from the Jewish community that was pro-Biden and anti-Trump that was against these people calling Trump Hitler. They wanted the Hitler comparison to stop. They put a notion to put the Hitler comparison to stop because of what Hitler represent to their culture. And guess what? They stopped it. They don't, they're not doing it no more. But us, we allowed Joe Biden to say they're going to put you back in chains. But us, we allowed Joe Biden and other um, Democratic, I guess, political pundits saying that they're going to bring back Jim Crow or, you know, they're not going to allow black people to vote. They're going to put us back in chains. They allow that. We allow that. But them trying to use those same scare tactics to call Donald Trump Hitler, the Jewish community was not for it. Or you're not going to disrespect their heritage in that kind of way. You're not going to do it. But they do it to us. And we do it to ourselves. I remember seeing TikToks of girls twerking in cotton fields, dressed like how they used to dress back in the days with the bigger garments on and hair and plaits twerking in cotton fields saying if tiktok was out or twerking was out during slavery throw it, throw it, throw it, throw it. they was picking cotton and twerking i remember seeing party flyers for a party during mlk birthday week with mlk with gold teeth and do rags on That's how we see our own culture. And the other crazy part about this too is with our own history and our own culture, we are fighting. (laughs) Let's let's just put this in perspective. We are fighting for white people to teach our history and culture in schools. That's what we're fighting for. We're not saying let's boss up and let's teach our own, but instead we are saying let's have them teach us. We're not saying let's pick up some books and teach our own history. We're saying let them teach our history in schools. We need, what is it, CRT? We need critical race theory in schools. Why are we fighting for our quote-unquote impressor to teach our children? What other group of people you know doing that? (laughs) That's crazy to me. That's crazy to me. So... I want to close on this, man. I know how attached black culture is to they not like us. But before we make the shirts and change our screen names and, you know, crip walk all over the place, they not like us. I get it. (laughs) Before we get into that, we really need to ask ourselves. Is this really a flex? They not like us. Because like I said, I gave you five reasons Two, three, four, five plus five. on why it's a bigger problem that we're not like them. Thank you for listening to the Broken Traditions podcast. Appreciate your time. I'm Anton X on Peace. Real Rap Ryan is signing off. All right, later. One.